Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV. I've gotten a few comments asking me to show how to check if a capacitor is bad or weak on an HVAC unit. So that's what this video is gonna be all about. I will be showing you how to check using a multimeter whether a capacitor is within the acceptable range or not. And I'll also explain the quick little calculation that you would need to do to arrive at that number. Now, if you're somebody that hates doing any kind of calculations, don't worry, I got you covered. I typed up a little Excel spreadsheet just for you that you can take a screenshot of later on in the video. What we have here is a standard capacitor that you can see in any HVAC unit and all of them should have some kind of a label on them that tells you what microfarad rating this capacitor is rated at and what we're interested in right now is the plus or minus percentage. So this capacitor is 45 UF which stands for microfarad and 5 UF. So if we look at the top of it, Herm is gonna be our compressor, C will be our common, and Fan will be our fan. So this is a dual capacitor. There's also single capacitors. So there would only be two of these sections instead of three. All a dual capacitor is, is basically a combination of two capacitors. So there's a capacitor side for the fan motor, and there's a capacitor side for the compressor. If we look back on our label here, Basically, all this means is this capacitor on the compressor side should be 45 microfarads plus or minus 6%. Okay, so we have here a 45 by 5 microfarad capacitor and a 35 by 5 microfarad capacitor. Both of them are plus or minus 6%. If you look at the cheat sheet, we have minus 6% and plus 6% right over here. And then if we find our capacitor size, let's go down to 35. It says right here that our capacitor should be within the range of 32.9 to 37.1. And the 45 microfarad capacitor can be found right here, 42.3 to 47.7. So now let's go ahead and check these capacitors with a multimeter. First of all, of course, you're gonna have to have a multimeter that can check capacitors. You'll have to have a setting that says MFD for microfarads, or it'll say UF with like a backwards looking U. So you set your multimeter to that, and we can now check our capacitor. So this one, let's check our compressor side first, which is gonna be C to Herm. So I'm gonna take my lead and put it into one of these holes on the spades, just so there's a good connection. And we'll put the other lead on the other side. And it doesn't matter which lead goes to which side. And as you can see on my meter, we are coming out with 43.2. Let's see what we have for the fan. This is the five microfarad section. For the fan, we have 4.9899. So almost right on the money. If we look at our chart again, here is our 45 microfarad. The lowest it should go is 42.75. And since we had 43.2, we know that our capacitor is still within the acceptable range. And I often get asked, will an HVAC unit run with a weak capacitor or with a capacitor that's out of range, either above or below? And the answer is yes, the unit can run and for quite a while too, even if the reading is well below. For example, a 45 microfarad capacitor can still run even with a 30 microfarad capacitor in there. In fact, I've actually seen an air conditioner where a technician came out and instead of a 35 microfarad capacitor, he put in an 80 microfarad capacitor and the unit was running just fine for a whole three weeks before I came back out there. But here's the downside. A capacitor that is outside of its acceptable range it'll cause the compressor or the fan motor to work harder than it normally does, and it'll also overheat a little bit. All of this will effectively decrease the lifetime of that compressor or the fan motor. So optimally, if you have a capacitor that is outside of that range, it should be replaced. Let's go ahead and check our other capacitor. And by the way, just yesterday I was checking a capacitor and my readings on the meter were just all over the place. 400, 350, 380, and it just kept bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. And the meter would not stabilize. It would not get to just one reading. So all I did was turn off my meter, turn it back on, and the next time I measured it, everything came out fine. It came out to about like 41 microfarads. Everything was good. So if you ever have any funky readings, 
try resetting your meter or perhaps replace your batteries and it's unlikely but sometimes the meter itself could be bad as well and unfortunately that you cannot reset. Okay so back to our 35 by 5 capacitor except this time we're going to calculate it manually. Let's do the calculation first before we measure it. So if we go to a calculator, most of your phones will have a calculator I assume. The calculation for this is very simple. This one is plus or minus 6%. So first of all, we type in our microfarad rating, which is 35 minus, and then you do the parentheses, 35 times 0 0.06, which is 6%, parentheses. That will give us 32.9. So the lowest that this capacitor should be is 32.9 microfarads. So now let's go ahead and check our capacitor with our meter. From common to herm, we're checking our compressor side. And we're getting a read of 34.27, which means that this capacitor is good as well. And I actually thought this capacitor was going to be bad, but I guess not. You get two examples of good capacitors. Let's check the fan side, actually, see what that looks like. 4.94. That's well within the range, too. But if we consult our cheat sheet, 5 microfarad plus or minus 6% is 4.7 on the low side. So yes, that's within the range. Now, if your phone or calculator does not have these parentheses, you could also just do 35 times the 6%, 0 0.06, equals 2.1, and then clear everything out and simply do 35 minus 2.1 and that gives you your minimum range. Plus or minus 6% is the most common, but some capacitors will have plus or minus 5%, some of them will have plus or minus 10%, and there's some other oddballs, different percentages, but for the most part, all the HVAC units will have one of these, usually either the plus or minus 5% or the plus or minus 6%. And you probably already know this, but for those of you that don't, if the top is bulged out, if it's popping out or if there's any bulges anywhere on the capacitor, then you don't even need to check it. If it's bulging out on the top, that means the capacitor is bad. And that is how you check a capacitor. I really hope that made sense. If it didn't, please let me know in the comment section below. Or if you have some other tips about this whole topic, also would love to hear from you in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, let me introduce you to my new favorite nut. It's called a chestnut. I didn't know this thing even existed until we moved to Hawaii. So this is what it looks like. This is how you open it. <laughs> and here's what it looks like inside. It's just lined up with these sacks or whatever you want to call them. And if you peel open the skin, you have this white looking brain matter, or basically a nut that looks like a brain, and it's just delicious. If you ever get a chance to try one of these, I highly recommend it. It tastes like raw almonds, or if you ever had a walnut that wasn't quite ripe, that's kind of what it tastes like. Very, very good. And if you weren't impressed by the chestnut, let me leave you with a little story. A local priest and a deacon stood on the side of the road holding a sign that said, The end is near. Turn yourself around before it's too late. They held this sign up to every driver passing by. Leave us alone, you religious nut, yelled one man, sticking his head out the window as he passed him. And a few seconds later, around the corner, they heard a big splash. At this time, the deacon tells the priest, Do you think that perhaps we should just change our sign to say, The bridge is out? <laughs>